As you might know from one of my recent videos, which I'll link up here, my wife and I just recently ordered a Tesla Model 3 with full self-driving. One of the biggest reasons to buy the Model 3 now is to get in on the FSD beta. I do AI research, as I've talked about before, and specifically I look at image processing, so full self-driving is really an irresistible draw for me. It's sort of like candy. <laughs> but beyond that, my driving style and my attitude towards driving will make me a very rigorous software tester. Here's why and how I hope my data proves useful to Tesla. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. As I noted in a recent video, also I'll link that up here, I do research into the artificial intelligence at the University of Georgia. Uh, what fascinates me about full self-driving is trying to understand what's going on kind of under the hood of a car. <laughs> Good pun, right? <laughs> Ugh, sorry. So it was that aspect of a Tesla that finally pushed me over the edge to purchase one. You know, I, I love the fact that it's an electric car. Also, that's awesome. But the thing that really pushed me over the edge now is to get in on this beta testing for the new version of the software. My wife, on the other hand, is just really happy to have a very sweet car. So, you know, that's fine, too. That's all good. With this video, I'm going to start a new playlist, which is going to be something like test driving, full self driving or something like that or testing out full self. Anyway, that'll be this will be the number one and I'll put a bunch of them in order afterwards. So you can kind of keep an eye out on that playlist and you can see over time, obviously there'll be this one where I'm doing things manually because I don't have the car yet, but then I will go through and actually do each of the full self driving videos as it goes. I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is a short version, which will be cut down and it'll just be the incidents that I notice either where it does really well or it does really poorly. And I'll also have a separate list for those who love to watch paint dry. In fact, I'll start with this one also. I have like, uh, what is it, about about a half an hour worth of us, me and my son, driving back and forth to the climbing gym, which I think is a good torture route. So if you enjoy watching paint dry or just watching videos as you fall asleep, you might find it kind of comforting to just listen to the sound of the road as we drive around and you can see all the little gotchas that can pop up. So why am I a good tester in my mind at least? Well, I am, I guess what I would term a highly engaged driver. <laughs> my sister thinks I'm a crazy driver. My wife gets stressed out by me. I know, I know, I know. But there's a reason for it. Every time for me is like a competition with myself to get a better score. And literally I have, I mean, probably not down to exact numbers, but I have a score in my head every time I leave the driveway. I want to make it clear I'm not competing with other people here. What I want to do is have a perfect drive. What that means is the most efficient drive, the least amount of corrections, the highest safety margins given those factors. As might be obvious from my other videos and certainly from what I'm talking about now, I am definitely on the autism spectrum. <laughs> like, Personally, I believe it's a superpower along with ADD. I've got all the good stuff. So anyway, I treat driving like a video game, except the best score I can ever get is maybe a little bit above zero, not some really high number. And hopefully it's not like Mario Kart. It's a little bit more like real racing or something like that. So let's look at the way I internally score my drives. I start at a level of zero, so it's just neutral, right? If I pick a wrong lane and a two lane road, that's big negative points, right? I need to pick the one that's going to go faster when the light changes. If I pick the right lane, I get some positive points, but not as much as I get negative points if I pick the wrong lane. If I wait too long to make a turn, especially a left turn and I get stuck, that's negative points. If I don't see a person waiting to make a left turn up ahead in a two lane road and I don't get over soon enough and I get stuck behind that person, also big negative points. If I see way ahead and I make a lane change to avoid having to stop behind somebody and to make my transition smoother and go more efficiently, that's nice, that's good points. If I fail to see that a person is about to cut me off and have to brake hard, big negative points. I should be able to see that ahead of time, that somebody's about to come out. And believe me, in Georgia, people will come out. <laughs> like, if they have an excuse, they will get out there. If I fail to see a walk sign counting down and then accelerate correctly to get through the light before the change, that's negative points. If I do it right and so I see it counting down and I manage to get through before the light turns yellow, then that's to the good also. 
Even if I fail to avoid slow cars in a parking lot, that's also negative points. And on and on and on. You know, every circumstance has a, a little positive and a big negative potential. So it's really hard to get above zero. It's really easy to crash and have a terrible drive. So, so basically, I'm always evaluating how I could have done the drive better every single time. I want to increase my score, right? The goal is to arrive the fastest way possible while being safe. I want to do minimal braking so there's minimal wear on the car. I want to have no sudden corrections due to not seeing far enough ahead of me to avoid an emergent situation. The consequences of this, of course, is I'm incredibly engaged in my driving, as people will definitely tell you if they've ridden with me. Yeah, it looks really aggressive, but my goal is always to have safety margins while being as efficient as possible. That's the goal of driving. And getting anywhere close to an accident, like even if it's like <laughs> pretty far away by most people's standards, that's huge negative points because in my mind, I should never get close to an accident. That's nothing should ever happen like that. But of course, the other consequence of this is it's absolutely exhausting, right? If a drive to the grocery store is sort of like running the Indy 500 for me. Fire! I knew it, you're lying! Relax. I'm fired! There is no fire. It requires my full focus, many chances to lose, <laughs> a narrow path to winning, and I even do this as a passenger, and yes, I promise I will judge you if you drive me around somewhere. I'll try to be quiet about it, but I'll definitely judge you. Thus, in an ironic way, I, I absolutely hate driving. It seems like I would be the perfect person to drive and I would love to do it, but I hate it. It's exhausting and stressful and everything for me. So that's one of the biggest reasons that full self-driving is appealing to me. Plus, of course, the whole AI aspect, which I think is just amazing. So in just a second, let's discuss how all of this will, I hope, make me an excellent full self-driving beta tester. But first, I want to make a big shout out to my Patreon patrons. Thank you guys so much. And also, I want to make sure if you enjoy this video that you please do like it because YouTube's algorithm requires that for other people to find it. And of course, subscribe to this if you want to see more of this, if you want to see the playlist. I have a lot more hardcore topics. In fact, I have one coming up with Arthur Choi from uh, the University uh, UCLA, and I think it's going to be an amazing. It's about explainable AI and how that relates to um, full self-driving and how it relates to the neural networks and everything that Tesla is working on. So I hope you guys find that super interesting. For my patrons, I will release that early with minimal or no commercials. So you guys get to check that out and also get to comment and get sort of more, more direct feedback. As this channel has grown, obviously, it's harder and harder for me to respond to everybody. But that's a way to kind of catch my ear because you get the comments in early. So how will this affect the way that I test out full self-driving? I will judge full self-driving just as I do myself and other drivers when I'm a passenger. Sorry about that. <laughs> Every place I would get negative points, full self-driving is going to get them too. And so I'll basically start out as I pull out of the driveway. Every full self-driving drive is going to have a rating of zero. And I will rate it positive and negative by how many times it gets dinged or it does something good. Me having to take over is obviously a big negative score, but even things like not picking the correct lane at a stoplight in order to go the fastest, uh, sometimes if there's two cars, like then it's a real guessing game, and I think I can do it pretty well. But if there's like, say, one lane has one car in it and one lane has four cars in it, the, the full self-driving car should pick the one with the one car in it because that's the most efficient path. I doubt it's going to do that, but we will see. Also, every time the car is lazy, it gets big negative points. So if it stays in a lane rather than getting around a slow driver, or if it gets stuck behind somebody making a left turn in a two lane road, all of those things will count for negative points beyond just the fact that it's being safe and everything. So I'm really going to be judging this very, very to a high degree of human drivership. Let me tell you a little bit about Athens. Around town, we have very narrow streets. We have blind corners. We have poorly marked lanes. So I think it's a good torture test. We also have college student drivers and college student drivers suck. Sorry guys, but you do. <laughs> so there's a lot of very poor driving that's gonna go along around the car itself. So I think the Ego car, which will be the car I'll be driving, is going to have a really hard time driving well in this environment. Thus, I really do think this is a really good torture test for the car. And in fact, I have a route that I take about three times a week to go rock climbing. And I've been hopefully showing some videos of that as I've been doing this. And that's the one, again, I have a link, I'll put it up here, to the entire drive so you can see the whole thing if you, again, like to watch paint dry. But anyway, those you can see some of the gotcha moments and some of the issues in terms of like driving and making it there and 
doing it well, and the blind corners, etc., etc., etc. So this torture route is about 15 minutes each way. There's two different routes, each of which has its own set of gotchas. <laughs> uh, there's windy neighborhood roads with no lane markings and people out walking their dogs or running. There are high speeds with lots of traffic in two lanes. There's really, really bad light setup where there's like three lights, four lights in a row, actually, that just completely snarl up traffic. Um, there, I get, like I said, there's inexperienced college drivers driving like dummies. <laughs> there are slow speeds with blind corners. There's a couple of blind stop signs with moving cross traffic. There are many pedestrians. There's lots of shifting light from trees. So I'm going to do a setup so I can record each of these trips and see how full self driving does. I've actually ordered like a mount that would go on the headrest. So hopefully I can mount a GoPro or my cell phone or something like that and actually capture everything so that if and when something happens, I'll be able to like peg it and we can go back and take a look at it and examine what's wrong with that particular moment. And of course, with problem areas, as hopefully the full self-driving gets better and better, we'll analyze how each problem moment gets better over the iterations, or hopefully doesn't get worse, but it could get worse in this specific situation. Of course, I plan to send Tesla feedback whenever and however I can. I believe with the beta software, they have something, but it's possible by the time it goes public, it'll just be automated. But if there's a way I can specifically send feedback to Tesla, I definitely will be doing that as well. So what's the end game here? Well, I really want to see how truly good or bad full self-driving is. And not just safety, right? I think that's a baseline. <laughs> you should never feel unsafe in the car. But I want to see how well it drives compared to not just a lazy human being, but a really engaged human being like me. <laughs> So how close can it get to an above zero score? That's going to be the interesting question. I think it's going to be really hard. I'm, I'm very hard on myself. I'm going to be really hard on the full self-driving. Of course, I really also want to help Tesla out in my own tiny little way. I know I'll just be a few miles out of the billions, but you know, any, any little bit helps and I'll, it'll make me feel good to help out the, the Tesla team, Andre Carpathy and all. And of course, I will be trying to think about how the neural network works and what's actually going on under the hood. Like again, pun, no pun intended, but, <laughs> but I'm really interested to see if I can figure out when it makes a mistake, why it's making that mistake. And I think that will again relate to the episode I'm going to do shortly about explainable AI, because it actually starts to make sense when you understand how different neural networks process the world versus how humans think. And of course, the final end game is hopefully I will never have to drive again. I'll be able to, you know, say where I want to go and put my hands over my head, lean back and go to sleep for a while. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is just a setup episode again. So things are going to be rolling as soon as we get the car. But I just wanted to kind of preview all of this and say why I think I am a particularly good test driver for this situation. If you enjoyed the video, please again, do like it and definitely subscribe if you want more of these. And if you want some more technical topics, they are coming very shortly also. And don't forget to ask me questions in the comments or particularly at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.